This is rad, uh, which I believe is Double Fine's answer to Nuclear Throne. It's a uh, nuclear-powered top-down shooter with mutations involved. At least that's what I picked up from the trailers. I have yet to start this game, even at all. The first apocalypse wasn't much of a surprise. I mean, from what I hear, the ancients kind of had it coming. Hey! <laughs> when the MX-1s came and spread the fault out, most things were toast. But after that is when things got really weird. By the time the second apocalypse came around, we were totally like, seriously? At least, that's what the Elder tells us. The Menders meant well, but something went wrong with all those machines. Like, really wrong. They just, poof, disappeared and left things worse than before they started. And I guess that just leaves us, the survivors. We live in the now, because we don't know if there will be a tomorrow. At least we have each other. All right. Well, let's do a new run. Style select. Jim Kata, Thrasher. Huh? Who? What? Ah? Gah? Valley Girl? Okay. I'm sorry. How come she was not number one? Going with Valley Girl. Loading. Is that the beginning of... That sounded like the beginning of Beat It. And actually, the opening music um, on the splash screen sounds a lot like Apex Legends. They're doing a good job of hitting these emotional touchstones with me. lived in the shadow of those who came before us, weathering the dangers of this fractured world together. But the machines by which we draw our power, purify our air, and nourish our crops are failing. One of us must journey through the fallow to find new power sources. It is to the youth that we must turn now. For it is their vitality in which we must place our hope. Who will make this sacrifice? <laughs> Me, I will. Yes, I can see it in your eyes. You cannot survive the toxic breath of the fallow as you are. And so, by the power of the menders, you must be remade. What? Your body will now absorb and use the toxins, the rads of the fallow instead of being devoured by it. You will need this. Should you fall, this weapon will transport itself back here, so that others may continue the quest in your place. You set out in the morning. my non-matching sneakers. So that's the way out. Go now into the fallow lands. This is just my town. I imagine, I don't know, I'll be managing upgrades here or something at some point. This does seem to have a uh, roguelike vibe to it. So I'm assuming that I'll be dying a lot and then coming back and uh, <laughs> with more options. All right. 
Is this, wait, this isn't where I'm supposed to go. This is not where I'm supposed to go. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, I got a mini map in the upper right corner behind my head. Well, that's not helpful. Let me move that. There we go. Ah. Child, take heed, for I have a few words of wisdom for you. The wasteland we call the Fallow is full of muties. Be prepared to defend yourself. Your bat contains the heart of a mender and can save you from terrible falls. Once in the Fallow, seek the respirator machines, for their laser light will show you the way forward. As you absorb more rads, you will continue to mutate, but do not fret, for it is the key to your survival. New life will sprout in your wake. This is one way in which the world shall be reawakened. To reach the fallow, simply walk through the triangular frames of the transference gate. Let's go. Y attacks and B jumps. Loading. I'm playing on the switch, so those letters actually correspond to the correct buttons for those features. Oh, just when the music was about to get good. What was left of the ancients was half buried in the cracked lands. Hmm. Ah, who are you? So good. It's kind of Diablo like, actually. Top down melee action. Complete with destructible terrain that doesn't do that much. Oh no! What's that? Eventually, all that new growth made a difference. There might be no point to me hitting every obstacle that I run into. What are you? Oh, neat. Okay. So is this... Can I go... Okay, it looks like I can go down in here. The Menders tried to contain the devouring behind those gates, but it just didn't work. The devouring? There's all these new concepts that uh, I don't quite understand yet. Is this edible? What is that? Maybe if my health was low, this would heal me? The remade ones could activate the respirators because they had a little bit of the menders inside them. Oh. Oh, okay, so when I tried to enter that door, I couldn't because I was missing two things. Uh, this seems to have been one of those things. I need to find another thing like this and activate it. And then I can go through that door. Whoa. Okay, so that damaged me. I wonder if I can... Yep, okay, so that was health. I just collected an audio cassette. I think I was tough for being so small. Was this me leveling Mutation. up? A firearm. Baptize mutants with globs of fire. Use R to aim. Okay, and then... Cool. Well, that's going to be much safer. Oh, that's hard. Looks like I don't get any aim assistance, which is okay. Is this where I came from? I think this is where I came from. What about down here? Key. Okay, looks like that does significantly less damage than my bat. If we're 
I'm not actually sure if I fought that particular enemy before. Um, my abilities show up in the lower left corner, so I'm gonna move my face again. So you can see there's sort of a, I can use this a certain three times before it has to recharge again. All right, so where, did I? I must have missed the second like tiki head or whatever that I need to uh, activate. So let's, now that I know vaguely what it looked like, we should run through the world again and see if I can recognize one. See, I recognize the first one because when I got near it, it showed the X button and indicated that I needed to press it. Uh, I think I will not try to jump off that. And you can see on the mini-map that I've got the one tiki head. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, and I need a second one. This is the first one. Where? Oh, that'll reflect anything. That's interesting. So where... Is the second one. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my gosh! Suddenly so many more enemies than I had yet faced. And I don't have a lot... Of, I can't just shoot at these guys forever. I don't have a ton of ammo. So... I mean, I can shoot at them forever, but it's gonna take a really long time because I, I run down my... You know what I'm talking about. All right, so... I should probably just hit them with a bat. It looks like they have a pretty long delay before they attack me. So I can usually get a few shots off before taking any damage. Is that everybody? Ciao. Guess that was everybody. But, yay, kick things off cliffs. Get off the cliff. I love that it's got, uh, oh, what's this? A fruit snack, okay. Okay, so we can push the A button to use that snack whenever I want to, that's cool. Okay, but where is this other tiki head? I assume that that's my goal right now, is to get the other tiki head, right? I feel like I've gone everywhere and have not seen the second head. Do I do I need to go back home through that? Do I it's maybe is there something I can do down here? Okay, so it's somewhat open. But it looks like I still need to get another head. Well since I'm I feel like I must just be crazy. Like, you know, somebody watching me must have seen the head and is like, why can't, why, why didn't you find it, you idiot? Look, look, it's right there. Uh, but I'm really not seeing it. So I'm gonna try to go inside this little door here that might lead back home. The Menders built the great underground to connect everyone, but I wouldn't be caught dead in there. Okay, so this, Maybe is not the way back home? What is it then? Because I spawned right by it, so I assumed it I assumed it was the way back home. But maybe it is not. Oh, I like that our our shots can collide, that I can block them with my shots. I also like, by the way, that my character has physically changed to accommodate this uh, mutation. Okay, so now I'm somewhere else. Oh, I'm, I'm nearby, I'm on like a different island nearby. So maybe there's a tiki head on this island that will still connect back to the beginning. That seems reasonable. I wonder what these audio cassettes are for. 
and what what that five and a quarter inch disc is gonna be for. What's this? It's nothing. Hmm. Can I jump past this? Yes. Ah, hello. Okay, so when something dies, I'm basically getting, I'm getting rads, I'm getting XP from that, uh, that little flow of, I don't know, it looks kind of like magical power that comes into me. Oh, I've got to go, uh, point of no return, huh? Unless, oh, maybe there's a way back this way. Where is your tiki head? Uh, ha, there it is. Let's uh, deal with these guys first. Okay, so whenever I see that stuff blow into me, I know I got a bad guy, even if uh, I killed them off screen like that one. So I'm gonna wake up this Tiki Head thing. Floppy. I'm gonna wake up this Tiki Head thing. And so my question is, so th this should unlock that pyramid that I saw before. But does that pyramid? The way is open. Okay, so that is the way forward. Okay, so I was, I was wondering like, are the pyramids optional things on the side? Or are they, my, like my primary, my main path, my main progression. Looks like they're my main progression. So hopefully, I think I could backtrack by jumping off that one cliff, but let's see what this, where this takes me. Is this the same place? This looks like a different place from before. What do I, what is this? Mutation acquired. Your rubbery skin can no longer be permeated by toxic water, making you immune to the damage. Oh, neat. Okay. You know what? I'm betting that other underground spot probably also had one. I forgot that I could jump. So I think that other underground spot probably also had one of those, and I missed it. Maybe I should go back to that. Hello. Welcome basic member I'm a basic member huh The shops were run by the cathode raiders who were way into artifacts and the 4-3 aspect hmm. ratio Okay, I'll worry about that stuff later The cathode raiders were airheads They stared at empty screens a lot waiting for the transmission <laughs> Hello. Hey, bud. You got a way to light this fire? My toes are getting cold. What fire are you talking about? That one? Oh, hey. Oops. X. Right. Oh, I can only hold one thing at a time. Juicy. All right. Well, that's kind of neat. I wonder if I'm gonna encounter more of those that require specific mutations. Okay, so looks like this is all there is to do here. Let's get out of here then. Wait a minute. There was an interact button over here. What does this do? Oh, interesting. So I can just tell it, once I've navigated them once, I don't have to navigate them again. I can just teleport freely. Well, that's cool. Okay, so it looks like if I want to get back, I really do need to backtrack by jumping off that one cliff. So, this game implies that it has a roguelike structure. I'm, so I'm wondering, like, are these islands handcrafted? But then, 
they're rearranged in different ways for different runs? Or are they, oh, what was that? Or is there more procedural generation? Mean, I'm assuming if it's a roguelike, there must be procedural generation, right? But, uh, okay, so let's go over here and like take advantage of this mutation machine. <laughs> Mutation. Root out hidden fruit with increased olfactory senses. Okay, so I should be detecting fruit now. Let's see how that works. All right, so oh wait, which way am I going? I'm going this way. So I wanna go and see what's inside this pyramid. It's a boss battle, of course it is. Seems like a multi-boss battle. know who's the most dangerous. He looks like he might be the most dangerous. So I'm just going to keep focusing fire on him. I'm having to wait for my flame to charge up again. Definitely a, a hardship. Part of me wishes I had a dodge button, but then part of me remembers the last top-down game I played where I didn't use it at all. So, watching him dodge is making me jealous. Um, tutorial boss battle. This is pretty good because, I mean, I have to stay active and engaged and engaged the whole time. I'm getting hurt occasionally. You are rad. But I didn't feel like I couldn't handle it at any point. Like, it's good to sort of get me used to the idea of boss battles without it just being sort of dull because it's so easy. Shunk this stuff down. Unlocked. What is this? Mutation shot. Fire gland. Contains a fire gland you can add to your bod. Okay, how do I add a fire gland to my bod? Endo mutation. Oh, increases your body's production of fire. Shoot more fireballs before you run dry. Oh, uh, yeah, I can hit like four or five out now. That's cool. Interesting, I only get one... I only get one slot for items, including items that Heart mutation. I need a trigger for, like, upgrades. Alright, so now I guess this is going to take me to the next area altogether? Menders built the transference gates to instantly move between places. Die, chicken. Okay, what... What is up? If I can't murder chickens, what is this game about? Loading. Hoard your tapes in the town deposit box to grow your capital and get new perks from Mac. So am I going to lose all my tapes if I die right now? Oh, hey, I'm back home. Okay, so what do I want to do now? Let's see. Why am I back home? Okay, I don't feel like I need to buy that. Is this the deposit box? 
Okay, so I stick my tapes in there. How do I know how? Okay, so then I've got eight tapes available that I can eject whenever I want to. What else can I do? Who are you? Need the gate open? I'm your man. Okay. Like, this gate? So we're dancing with our chickens. What is going on? Why am I here? What's my next objective? <laughs> Am I just sort of like recuperating and then I need to go back out into the into the fallow? By the way, check out the way the minimap works. Like it's carving out my path specifically by tracing this like light gray line through the dark gray map. So I can not only tell what's there, but also where I've been. There's a whole town here, but I guess. Should I just go back out? Who's this? Billy beats his own fertilizer. That's his competitive advantage. Uh. Okay. Wow. What now? Your quest will be full of tragedy, hardship, and challenge, but also meat. Lots of meat. I guess. Should I go out this way again? What happens if I go out? Do I go back to the same place, or is it. Give me a new place Loading. to fight. Let's say I got about 15 minutes left. Let's see what I can do with that time. that the remade ones could turn poison into life. Okay, so it looks like I have to aim manually on the horizontal axis, but it will help me on the vertical. Whatever I'm pointed at, it will... Oh, never mind. Maybe it's not giving me as much help as I thought. Floppy acquired. There we go. I really like the idea in an apocalyptic game of uh, enemies that are hermit crabs wearing garbage. Very on brand for a world like this. Everyone had slow moving projectiles. damage me right as he was dying. I can't tell if it's just his normal attack or if those guys explode when they die or something I need to keep my distance. Ah! Looks like I escaped that projectile just as it was wearing out. Is 
like a lot of these little guys are like smaller versions of the big bosses that I fought. Meat. Meat. Floppies. Floppies. Okay, there's like a medium sized version of that crab guy. So it's like maybe they just took every enemy and sort of remade them multiple times at different scales. So they can maybe 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 they can use reuse the same animations? For the same AI but operate at different scales? I don't know. Looks like I'm getting close to one of these tiki heads so. though. Oh, wait. So this definitely doesn't have the same, like, frantic, overwhelming pace that M Nuclear Throne has, which, you know, I assumed that Nuclear Throne was going to be my closest uh, comparison for this game. But it looks like it's actually not very similar to that. This has got kind of a slower vibe to it. My projectiles move more slowly. I progress through levels more slowly. So this is a very game designery game, uh, meaning that like a lot of the ideas in this game, the, the, seem, the things that seem like the driving ideas behind it, like the the fact that I advance by mutating my character and physically altering their body, that's the kind of idea that game designers come up with a lot. <laughs> like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we made a game where every time you got an upgrade, like your body physically changed? Like that was the, uh, like I think the Fable, fr the Fable franchise was kind of founded on that same kind of idea. And so one thing that I, that I like about Double Fine as a company is they seem to really support Floppy that kind of development. Like the kind of, you know, where it's not just, it's like you can just take one weird little idea that you have for a, a, a crazy game mechanic nobody's done before. And, and they'll invest, you know, a small amount of money in making a game that sort of fulfills that and tries it out. You know, things like, like, what is it, stacking? Is that another one where it's like, you know, it's a simple adventure puzzle game where the puzzles are all about nesting Russian dolls. Bankroll. And, like, nobody else would try something like that, but it's actually, you know, trying it doesn't require some big, huge, elaborate AAA game. You can make something small that tries it out, and if it ends up being brilliant, you know, you can really succeed with it, do more with it, but, but you know, if it ends up being kind of weird, then uh, that's fine, you just made a little weird game, and you can find a small audience for it, and that justifies it just as much as a large audience does. So I like this. Like, I mean, sometimes, you know, I think... This particular game probably isn't going to be like a game that I played to death, but it's really similar in my head to some other games that they've made that were exactly up my alley, like Headlander, for instance. I played the crap out of Headlander. In fact, if you uh, if you go back in my uh, in my video history, you can find like a full playthrough of Headlander. Uh, I don't usually do that. I, I usually just play games for a single session and then uh, figure I've learned what I could from them and I move on to another game. But Headlander I played all the way through, and it, it looks like it was, it was made under the same kinds of conditions, right? It's like somebody had a crazy idea for a uh, Metroidvania-style game where the, the powers you get are not just linear upgrades or, you know, just sort of this ever-accumulating set of diverse powers, but rather bodies that you inhabit, different bodies that you inhabit uh, and find in the levels. That's a crazy, weird idea. Mutation. What is this? I can glide to cover great distance. Can I really, though? Let's try to glide. Oh, well, that got me hurt. Yeah, so 
I'm really glad for the way that Double Fine operates because they support weird little games like this. And sometimes they're gonna find something that is exactly up my alley, is perfectly what I want. And sometimes they won't, but they're always doing something interesting. That, you know, like even if I end up, you know, taking a particular game and only playing a little bit of it and learning something from it, I feel like that game has affected me and it's done something new. It's not just another shooter or something. Like it's done something new that has kind of expanded my mind and now, you know, my ability to come up with good ideas, you know, and, and, and to inform my own decisions as a game designer, that, that is enhanced by the experience I have playing Double Fine games. Oh, interesting. It looks like... What? What is this? Hey, stop that. Anyway, it looks like this guy, maybe because he's full of gas, it seems like I hurt him a lot more with my fire than I do with other weapons. Ow! Stop that. You are rad. I'm pretty rad. Whoa, did I just get a compact disc? And another mutation. Enhance. Oh, I just noticed. I thought that these wings were being, like, because they respond when I jump, I assumed that they were tied to my jump, but I just noticed in the HUD that actually they're tied to the left bumper, and that would have been a better way for me to use these, like, for instance, to avoid damage uh, when it was spreading fire all over the ground. I just noticed that my, um, my hearts, I still have three hearts, but now they're divided into more segments, so I think my, um, I think my health has increased, but they're not doing it by just adding infinite hearts across the top, but they're actually subdividing the hearts more. It's an interesting decision. I mean, I guess, you know, it definitely saves space in the UI, but it means, I don't know, it's more expensive to, to draw more subdivided hearts uh, than it is to just add hearts, usually. Definitely the more subdivisions they add, though, the grosser they look, which seems to be uh, part of the motivation. I feel like, okay, we're running low on time. I feel like I should really find out what happens when I die. I don't know exactly how roguelike this game actually is. Hey, come here. Let's, uh, why don't you come over here close to this eyeball? Hey, you giant butt, come here. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Did that guy hit the eyeball instead of me doing it? I don't think I've fought a large one of these before. Uh, every enemy's got the ability to dodge my fireballs. Hard so cash. much tapes. I'm getting fighting these like mini bosses in this level is netting me so so much more money than I was getting before. Okay, so I think. I had asked the question earlier whether those guys were blowing up when they died, but no, it looks like the time that I got hurt by one as it was dying, I think it just managed to get an attack off at the last second. Turvama just prompted me with a question. Um, what's an idea for a game that sounds great but turns out to be very boring? Uh, that, that is a very good question because I know that has happened to me at least Jeez. once. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Um, I would probably cite some of the decisions we made on State of Decay 2. Honestly, like we had a lot of big ideas that we never were able to um, bring to full fruition that were about uh, it, enhancing the player's ability to create procedural stories. Um, and we had some good ideas that I think, you know, still might have some merit, 
but I think they would take a long time to actually flesh out and make work. And when it turned out we didn't have enough time to just uh, arbitrarily do a bunch of R&D work. Whoa, our, uh, our decision to commit to uh, procedural stories over traditional stories um, le left a lot of players feeling like the story of State of Decay 2 was very sort of flat and uninteresting and uneventful. And so that while, you know, I, I think that some of the ideas we had, if given a little bit more time and resources, probably had some merit to them. The, the practical outcome was that we, we had this idea that sounded really, really exciting, you know, a game that only did procedural stories. It sounded great on paper, but the implementation of it is so challenging. Trying to get that idea to work right is so hard. Like, I think, I think it's still possible. I still believe that it's not a crazy thing to want to do, but certainly trying to do it with the time and money we had in State of Decay 2 ended up making a game that was fundamentally less interesting to a lot of players. Okay, so I died. Uh, perfect timing, really, because I wanted to get out of here anyway. Uh, so I've unlocked Hot Sauce. You unlock. I unlocked High Tops. And, okay, so I can hit, kick off a new run or exit to the main menu. What does a new run look like? Let's just find that out. Loading. Okay, so it looks like when I select that, I start with the same character again. But maybe do I, are all my mutations canceled? That sounds like take on me. They're taking a lot of inspiration. Oh, ah! Okay, so it looks like the eight tapes that I deposited are still there. I could collect them if I want to. It looks like I've got none of the abilities I had, so I imagine I'm probably starting off at the beginning again. Like at that early level that had none of the mini bosses. Loading. So we'll wait through one more loading screen. We'll just see what it looks like, and uh, and then we'll get out of here. I'm glad you. I'm glad my answer worked for you, Turbo Mod, because talking about things that I feel like you know were mistakes in State of Decay 2 is kind of it's kind of a sensitive topic. You know, I don't necessarily want uh, you know I, I don't want to talk about that too much, just because yeah. So I've got I've got no range attack here at all. So all of my upgrades have been lost. Um. It's, you know, it's not easy to talk about past mistakes because, especially because, you know, in the, in the current, like, in the current environment uh, surrounding, you know, uh, game fandom, people can be very, uh, th th there's a strong tendency for people to want to blame and accuse people, you know, to, to see every failing of a game as a moral failing, as, uh, you know, as something that, that developers did maliciously in order to make people unhappy. Uh, which, you know, is not what we're doing. You know, we're not trying to make our games, uh, you know, in a way that will make people unhappy. It took time, but the world did eventually heal. But people can be so mean about it sometimes. You don't want to talk about your mistakes. You want to sort of uh, just kind of leave those subjects unaddressed. But I don't know. I'm the kind of person who just always feels like talking about something is usually better than not talking about it. My, my default reaction to almost any situation is to talk about it. So hopefully I'm not causing myself too many problems by talking too much. So what's this mutation gonna be? Prickly. So how do I... I'm pulling... Okay, so I can... Floppy. So I've got these spikes. Okay, so I can activate them with the R button. They shoot out, and then they retract for a while until they're ready to come out again. Well, it's nice having an indicator on my person telling me when my abilities are available to use. Uh, okay, but I think we're done. So let's get out of here. Exit to the main menu. And let me... Ugh, gonna take off all this crap. Ugh. 
I need to get some wireless headphones in here because the wires are constantly getting tangled up in the wheels of our chairs. And uh, luckily, it doesn't usually happen on the air because we don't move around that much. But uh, it can, it can, it can be a problem sometimes. So I'm gonna switch over to the camera here, and uh, let's wrap up the YouTube video. And my snaps are not as loud as they used to be. There we go. That's a decent snap. Anyway, uh, let's get out of here and then, I don't know, come back tomorrow. I'm gonna keep doing this. <laughs>